Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. What I'm going to be sharing with you all today is part number five of my block of the month for 2023, the Friendship Bouquet Quilt. So far, this is what we have accomplished. Let me show you what we've done. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of a glimpse of where we are so far. And today, what we're going to be doing is simply our nosegay block. There's four of these that we'll be putting together for the month of December. Since it's December, since it's very busy in most of our lives with the holiday season upon us, we're just going to need to make four of these little blocks, and then next um, month in January, we'll have the balance, the baskets that we'll be doing. I do just want to remind everyone you are welcome to register for this class at any time. Uh, you can work on this class at your leisure whenever it works for you. You don't have to have already started it. Um, you can go out to my website, quiltingwithlori.com. I'll have a link below. And just go to my shop and uh, scroll down to the Courses tab and find the Friendship Bouquet. It's a $25 registration to uh, become a part of this class. And every month, then I'll be emailing you what you need to accomplish this. So you can go ahead and register at any time. If you are already registered for the class, you would have received the email of the um, PDF for the instructions and the templates. You would have gotten those earlier this week. And by the way, the entire cost for this class is only $25. It is a steal. So it's a great one for you to join. And there's so many different techniques that you'll be learning throughout this. So um, you're welcome to join it at any time. If you have any questions about anything, just contact me either through my YouTube and uh, the contact here or go out to my website, quiltingwithlori.com, and you can contact, contact me through that and ask any questions that you might have. So this is the block that we're going to be working on today. Let's see how this block goes together. I do like to put all of my uh, blocks and information right here in a notebook, and that way I'll have access to this for the future. I'll put these PDFs of instruction and templates in plastic sleeves. And then I have everything where I need it and I can easily find it and can use it in the future if I want to make another quilt. So here is the block that we'll be making. And I have already uh, pulled out some of the pieces and have things started. Um, as you can see, I've put together the nine patch. The instructions will tell you exactly what you need to uh, cut out from your stash. Uh, you don't have to use the colors that I am using. You can use any colors of fabrics, any themes that you like. This is your quilt. Have fun with it. I have made a nine patch with a pale blue in the center, some um, medium pinks here and some dark pinks. So that's my nine patch. The instructions are in there on what you need to cut and put it together. And then you square them up. You need to make four of these blocks. You square up each of these little units to four and a quarter inches. So he's ready to go. And he's a very simple patch, so I'm, I'm not showing you how he goes together. Now, I have needed to um, take, let me grab the template here. For the PDF of the templates, I do need to use my plastic um, film, template film, to create these templates. And they're mirror images. A and D are mirror image, and C and B are mirror image. So I've only made one of these. And when I lay them on the fabric, I'm simply going to place it on the fold. And that way, with every tracing and cutting, I'm getting both the C and the D. And with every tracing and cutting here, I'm getting both the A and the D. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is get your plastic template out. And I do use, let me grab this here. I use a template marking pencil. It writes on plastic. I love it. It doesn't leave marks on my skin and it doesn't smudge anywhere. So I do like to use that as I'm tracing. I just lay the plastic over top of the patterns. I never ever cut my paper patterns my templates from the, pet, the paper. I leave them just as they are. They are intact. They stay um, in, as part of this page so that I will always have them for the future. I take my plastic template and place it over them and that's how I do my tracing. So I have an A and a D and a B and a, a C here. 
Now that those are traced and ready to go, I can simply um, go to my fabric here. Let me move this out of the way. So I could actually put all of this on top just like that. And the instructions tell you uh, what size with the fabric strips you're going to cut for each of these. So you'll just follow the instructions and cut out the width of fabric strips that you need uh, to create each of these. And then what I can simply do here is, uh, I will need to make sure that this is all lined up, but then I will simply go ahead and trace this. And then I will trace this. And when I trace and cut on that line there, I will have a B and a C from this. I will have a D and an A from the white as well as from the green because I have them on the fold and there, so there's four pieces or four layers right there. So as you can see here, I've laid this template on this narrower piece here and I have traced the lines there and here, flipped it around, traced it there. And in my EQ8 software, it always um, curves off the points that just helps to eliminate a lot of excess fabric in the seam allowances. So now I can use my rotary cutter and my ruler and simply go through here and cut this off. And which with each tracing and with each cut, and I will round off these edges here in a minute too, but with each tracing and with each cut, I am getting two, I'm getting mirror images here. And I believe they are C, B and C, so a B and C with each of these. And what I'm going to do to round off the corners is simply use my scissors. There we go. All right, so they are ready. And then over here, I have double folded the green as well as the white. So these are all on the fold. And I've already traced them as you can see here. So I've traced this with purple. I think you can see the purple a little bit better. I'm just using my water-soluble ink and then the air and water-soluble ink. So if you have one of these, this is um, it's called a Mark Be Gone. It works very well. And so I went ahead and traced that, flipped it, traced that, and now I can simply, I'm gonna stand so I can cut better. All right, so we have that. I do not cut around the plastic templates because it is easy to um, mess up and distort your plastic template if you cut into it. So I prefer to just trace around them and then I come back and there we go. So now we have, I believe these are A and D and A and D. So we have everything that we need from the templates. So what we'll be doing here is creating our half square triangles with the squares that we have and we'll be creating our nine patches with the small one and three quarter inch or 1.75 inch squares. And you'll simply want to line up your um, nine patch and you know, you, I put the darks out in the corner, that's what the pattern indicated, but you can certainly flip this around. You can do whatever you want to create your nine patch. This is what mine look like, and they are trimmed up, uh, squared up to four and a quarter inches. So those are ready to go, or that one is ready to go. I still have two more that I need to create, so I have the squares there for them. Now for the half square triangles, we're simply gonna do what we have done in the past. I teach this many times using my speedy solutions techniques where you're pulling squares and the size that you need, and these are a little bit larger than what we're, um, what we're needing. We're gonna put them right sides together, and you are simply going to, let me grab my ruler here, line those up, take a pen, and again, this one, I'm using my um, Mark Be Gone pen. You can use an actual pen because that is going to end up being the cutting line, so it doesn't matter if you use a regular pen or a pencil. All right, so I have, um, I have my line here, and I'm simply going to sew a scant quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line, and then when I um, cut it, after it's been sewn, I will cut on the drawn line, and I'll end up with two 
have square triangles um, from here. So here is one. This is one that I've already put together. And then we'll press it to the dark or press it open. And then we'll need to square them up. Let's see. I think it's three and a quarter inches we need to square these up to. Yes, three and a quarter inches is what the half square triangle needs to be squared up to. So you can go ahead and make your half square triangles the way we've been doing that. I've taught this many, many times. So we'll have the half square triangle ready. We'll have our little nine patch ready. Now let's see how we're going to put this nine patch with these um, two pieces. And again, we're going to be working with an, a Y seam. And we did this in block number one. You learned how to do the Y seam. It's really very simple. So I'm going to just show you again how to do this Y seam. So when we put these um, Y seams together, we're only going to put these pieces on this side of the unit. Um, this side of the unit is going to have these beautiful leaves, if you will. So um, we're only putting the cream colored Y seam strips on this side. What I have done is I have gone to the corner of each of these uh, one quarter of an inch in and I have taken my mark be gone and I put a little mark there. It just helps you. You can eyeball it if you've done this many a time. You might not need that marking, but that's that's what I like to do. So you're going to start by flipping this over. You're going to start sewing right at that mark and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down to the end. Or you could start here, but just make sure that you end or start right on that blue dot or that quarter of an inch mark and then flip it open and press it. And then um, we will come to this side and it will be sewn just the same way. We'll start or end right on that blue mark so that they're both touching there on both sides and we'll go um, we'll sew to the end and then we'll open it and you'll see what that looks like here in just a minute. Let me go ahead and sew both of these and I'll bring it right back. All right, I have sewn this side. I started on the mark on the blue dot and I sewed all the way down to the end, quarter of an inch seam allowance. I did do one back stitch up there and that is actually open. You'll see there's a quarter of an inch open, opening right there. That's not stitched and that's very important. So now, and I've pressed it, I finger pressed it right now. Now we're taking the opposite side, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to place that on here. And if you notice, let me see if I can get this closer for you. That blue dot ends right there on where that other blue dot was. So we're going to stitch from there to there, quarter of an inch, and stop. And let me go sew that. I'll bring it right back and show it to you. All right, I have both sides sewn on. And if I flip this up, you'll see there's a little quarter of an inch that's open to the bottom there, which is perfect. Now what I'm going to do is fold this unit diagonally and match all of this up on the end here. Because what I want to do at this point is stitch from this blue dot to the end. And at this point, you're definitely going to want to start at the blue dot and go to the end because you're not going to be able to get your machine to sew onto this point very easily. You could use a leader um, and, do, and get on that point and then stop here at the blue dot. But that's where we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch. And we're able to find that by folding this uh, right sides together on the diagonal. And so I'm going to go ahead and take it to the machine. And sew from here to the end, I'll bring it back and show it to you. All right, it didn't turn out too bad. Um, it's pretty good in the corner there. It's a little bit off, but I'm okay with it. Um, let me show you what it looks like back here. So I had sewn from there to the end, and then I opened it. And when I open it, I like to open out that mitered seam. That really helps it. And then I press that little corner into that mitered seam. And that just really helps it to lay nice and flat. So now I need to press this. And then this unit gets squared up to, let's see here, five and a half inches. This unit needs to be squared up to five and a half inches. 
So I have this unit scored up to five and a half inches. I still do need to press it. I haven't taken it over and pressed it, but it's laying pretty well. Um, and now we're going to lay out these side pieces, which are gonna create the beautiful leaves and make sure that you orient them properly so that the leaves um, are out on this end here. And these are mirror images. These two green pieces are mirror images. These two white pieces are mirror images. And I'm simply going to take them to the machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance across that side and press it. You can press the seam allowances open or toward the dark, whichever you prefer. And then these units are going to be squared up to three and a quarter by five and a half. So three and a quarter wide by five and a half long. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch those. I'll bring those right back. Here is my units. So I've finished these. I've squared them up to five and a half long, three and a quarter wide. I've pressed mine to the dark. You can press yours open if you choose. Here's my half squared triangle unit. I've pressed mine to the dark. It squares up to three and a quarter inches. And here's the other unit three and a quarter by five and a half. Now this can go together in basically two rows. So these two units will be sewn together, these two units will be sewn together, and then the two rows will be sewn together to finish the block. I've finished my block, here it is. It went together very easily. I've squared it up to eight and a quarter inches square and pressed it, as you can see there. And it looks like this. So these are the four nosegay blocks. These are called nosegays. These are the four nosegay blocks that we're creating this month in the month of December. In January, we're going to be creating all of these beautiful basket blocks. And they're going to be a, a, it's a border of baskets. And then the last thing that we'll do in January is this outside border. Um, just a, a real fun quilt. There's been so much that we have learned throughout this, from paper piecing to Y seams to applique. It's just been a lot of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today to see how we put together block number five, the nosegay block of our block of the month for 2023, the Friendship Bouquet Quilt. It's been a really fun one. I have truly enjoyed putting it together and I hope you have too. I do want to wish you all a wonderful, blessed holiday season this month. Hope you're enjoying your time with your family and friends. And if you do like the content that I'm providing on my channel, it would be a great blessing if you went ahead and liked, hit the like button and subscribed if you haven't already subscribed and share my videos with your friends and with your quilt guilds. I do appreciate that it does help my channel to grow so it can get out to more quilters just like yourself. So thank you so much. And until next time, happy quilting.